Hello everyone, my name is Shastin Odisho, and in this video I'm going to show you how to create this 3D animated cutout effect using a combination of After Effects and a little bit of Photoshop to help us out. So to begin, here we are in After Effects, and I've just got one sample clip on my timeline. I'm going to click and drag it in to create a new composition. I like the bright orange of this guy, it kind of caught my eye, but for your clip, you're going to kind of want a foreground and a background object. So although you could start this effect at any frame that you like really with a little bit of consideration, I'm going to start at the very beginning and in order to save this first frame and get it to Photoshop, we can actually go to composition, save frame as, and this is a, a good tip. You can always save frames out of your After Effects projects like this in this folder. But in this case, we're going to send it right to Photoshop with the Photoshop layers button. So it's going to ask you to name your PSD and just pick somewhere to save it for now. So once you do that, find it wherever you saved it and open up that Photoshop file that ended up getting saved. So what we want to do here is just use Photoshop selection tools, which are a little bit easier to work with than After Effects, and cut out the different objects that you want to animate. So there's many different options to cut things out in Photoshop. I actually have a handful of tutorials on that on my channel. But for this case, I'm going to use the Polygon and Lasso tool. Another good one to keep in mind is the Quick Selection tool. That one's pretty good. But I'm just going to use the Lasso. Make sure it's set to New or Add to Selection. I'm going to keep it at Zero Feather. And I'm going to start creating a selection. When you're working in Photoshop, you can always use the plus and minus keyboard shortcuts to zoom in if you want a better look at what you're doing. You could also look into using the pen tool if you want. I'm just feeling the lasso tool for today. Once you're done, you can always double click to close off your selection and it'll make the last two points meet. And you should see this marching ant line on your image. I'm going to right click and layer via copy to just create that selection on its own layer because we can actually use this to help us out on other selections. Next, I'm going to do the vehicle, make sure I highlight that original layer again. Now at this point, instead of retracing his arm all over again, since we already did that, I'm going to show you how we can use the other layer to kind of subtract it. So I'm just going to go through him and just get that little bit of the tire that's on this other side of the selection. Okay, so I'm going to layer via copy that from the original layer as well. And now since I want to remove parts of this one, I'm going to hold command it might be Alt or Option on if you're on Windows, and click on the thumbnail of this layer. You'll see the mouse icon change. And if you click it, it'll reactivate the selection of whatever's on that layer. So now that I have that selection active, I'm going to highlight the one with the car and delete. So it'll delete that selection from this layer. Press Command D or right click and deselect. And now I have everything on their own layers. So one, two, three. And actually, to take it one step further, I'm going to do the same thing, this time command clicking both of those layers while holding shift, and then delete both of those layers from the original layer. So all in all, we have three layers, background, middle, and foreground. It could be different depending on how many layers you want to go. So now that I'm done with this, I'm just going to save it and close Photoshop. Now go to wherever you saved your file, and drag it into your project media bin and it'll ask you how do you want to import this merged layers or choose a specific layer in this case i'm going to choose one layer at a time so we have three layers i'm going to choose layer one drag it in again choose layer two drag it in again and choose layer three so I'll press ok and now i should have all of those individual layers on my project media bin. So you can see background, middle, foreground. So I'm going to drag all these in, in that order. And with my original video clip on top, I'm actually going to move the start time over to, let's say, three or four seconds. This way we have some time to do some animation on those still frames before the video starts playing. The next thing I'm going to do is go to Layer, New, Camera, so we can create kind of a virtual camera to help us animate these cutouts. So I'll press OK on the default settings there. And now I want to right click on all of these layers and turn them into 3D layers. That'll allow our camera to view them as 3D layers. So you might see some weird things go on with once you turn the 3D camera on, some things might look like they get transparent or disappear. 
But let's begin animating by dropping down all of the layer contents, going to the transform section. And once you turn the layer 3D, you should have different options for position, X, Y, and Z, which is how close or forward it is to the background. So to create kind of a separation or a depth of field, let's take the background layer or the first one and adjust the Z position so that it's a little bit further than everything. Now let's take the middle layer, maybe bring it up just a tad. Maybe you can even leave it the same. Okay, there's a mistake you might run into. You have to make sure that these are in the right order. You can see I didn't have mine in the right order. Let me expand the layer name so I can actually read it. That's a good little tip. And it should actually be this one and then layer one. So it's one, two, three. So do be careful on your organization. That could be a common error. But now I think I've got it pretty nice. The background is the smallest, the middle is in the middle, and the foreground is the largest or closest to the camera. Now to really exaggerate that separation, let's go to the actual camera layer that we created. And in the transform section, we can actually add a little bit of rotation. So let's add some Y rotation, and that'll kind of slant things to their side. And just to kind of bring it back to center, we can change the point of interest, which is kind of like the anchor point, and bring it back to more of the center of the frame. And you can play around with these settings. My goal is to kind of keep things slanted, but still generally in the center of the frame. So once I do that, I'm gonna to go to the beginning and just add some keyframes to everything that we've just created. So in this case, I've adjusted the point of interest, the position, these settings. Now let's also add keyframes to all of those Photoshop layers. In this case, I only adjusted the position and that's for all of them. So I'm just clicking this little stopwatch icon. You'll see a little diamond keyframe pop up. And then let's go all the way to that four second marker, wherever we had our video begin. And let's reset all the settings so that by the time they hit this point, everything goes back into alignment. So reset, reset, reset. And you can see it adds those diamond keyframes back at the reset settings. And if you did everything properly, you should see it go from 3D cutout in a bit of a rotation to the point when it gets back, that all kind of fits back together like a puzzle and then the video starts playing. And you can really fill the background with anything you want, but one cool thing I've found to really accentuate everything and highlight the cutouts is by going to layer, new, solid. We'll just create a new solid, drag it underneath everything. So instead of leaving it black, which you could do, in my case, I'm just gonna find a gradient ramp, click that and drag it onto this black solid and create a cool color that kind of matches our image. In this case, I'll select some of that safety orange from the guy's butt there, I guess, and some asphalt gray. So we have some nice contrasting colors that still kind of blend at the same time and give us a bit of a better backdrop than the transparency so I think this could be a great effect to play with for sports footage, people or action shots and whatever else you might want to try it on. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it. Subscribe to my channel here on YouTube so you don't miss any of my future videos. You can follow me on social media at Justin Odisho to keep in touch and reach out to me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.